documentation. I suppose you have documented your fair share during other projects in, uh, in your bachelor's or something like that as well. So uh, many of the things that I'm going to talk about now is quite, um, it's more, more or less a refresh of your knowledge from before. Uh, but I also will uh, touch into some new stuff, I, I suppose. Um, so let's just jump into it. Topics we're going to go through. Uh, first of all, documentation. Why do we document? Documentation formats, documentation tools, and then we go on to, because I, I will talk first of it in a traditional sense, then we we'll go on to documentation and agile processes and focus on that, uh, and the, the document audience in, in agile. So, document audience, then I'm talk, talking about who are we talking to whenever we're documenting something. Okay, typically documentation is a pile of documents that you hand over to someone or, or something like that. Uh, but uh, there's also always a reason for, for documenting. You shouldn't document without having a reason to do it. Uh, so why documentation? Stakeholders require it. What kind of stakeholders require documentation? For example, you require documentation in order to understand what the use our API that we get for you. Yeah, exactly. So uh, that's one example. Any other? Maybe you need to document your process so that managers know what you're uh, working on, for example. Others? Users maybe need to know how to use the system, so the user is fine. Actually, a little stakeholder is there as well. Um, but um, in a more formal sense, uh, you want to define a system contract model, and, and then you have to document what you're going to deliver. You see? And that's also a part of the documentation. How did we document the requirements in, uh, in these projects that we are having? Sorry? Story points? No, not story points, but the first word is uh, correct. User stories. User stories, yes. That was what you meant, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah user stories. Um, and uh, also, it could be to support communication with an external group. Uh, we, uh, in Scooter, for example, uh, have uh, other uh, another company that we work with that delivers the CMS, the content management system that we deliver uh, on to our clients. So then we have to have documentation from them, how to use their APIs, how to implement external mod modules uh, on that CMS and so on and so on. And then we are the external group, we are the developers. So we need uh, documentation. Other external groups, it could be uh, users, the end users, for example, either super users or the regular users that uh, need to see how to use the, the system that's uh, being developed. Uh, yeah, external groups, there are several different types mm -hmm. of those. And you also want the document to support organization, organizational uh, memory. Uh, the question of the previous one. Yeah. Um, system contract model. Sorry? The system contract model. Uh, it's, the, it's the model that you, it's more or less the requirements that you um, agree upon with your client. Yes, so it's a contract. Yes, why documentation uh, to support organizational uh, memory? What do I mean by that? 
Because we can remember what we have done before. Ah, yes. Reading a piece of text and then just remember, oh, that's how it works. Yeah, because we implemented that class uh, five years ago, and now we have to somehow extend that class or do something with it. So we have to document it so that we know what we actually did five years ago. But not only for yourself, also for the new developers that comes into the organization. Maybe the developer that actually worked on that product have, uh, uh, yeah, have quit the job or moved on to another job or something like that. It's for audit purposes so that uh, uh, external um, persons or organizations can audit what the work we have done, examine it and see if it's good enough or yeah. uh, in other ways uh, uh, examine it, and to think something through. Because many things are in our heads. Uh, we know how we want to implement this module and we know in our heads know how we want to test this and our test strategy but do we want to get this onto paper to think it through you see so that could all also be a reason what kind of requirements do you have for documentation um, for example you want to use it as a communication medium between team members. How do designers document the designs that they deliver, for example? Maybe they also deliver a design manual, defining the typefaces to use, the sizes of the typefaces, uh, the line heights, uh, maybe the colors that we use in the design, etc., etc. So that's a documentation document. Uh, and also, one developer wants to document something so that another developer can pick this up. It's also an information repository for maintenance. It's information for management, for planning purposes. And it's information for users. That's typically user manuals, for example. And it's a uh, formal evidence related to system regulations and or certification. It can document that you're uh, doing or implementing something accordingly to some kind of state regulation or, or uh, something uh, like that. We can uh, uh, divide into two types of documentation types, either uh, process documentation, which records processes and maintenance, or product documentation, which describes the product being developed. Do you have uh, examples of either? A UML model of your uh, object, uh, uh, oh, sorry, class diagrams. What is that? Process documentation? No, <laughs> it's product documentation. You're documenting the actual product that you're developing, the architecture of it. Okay? Process documentation, meeting notes, for example. Or the issues, issue, issues that you register in uh, in Jira. It documents the process, what you have actually actually done to make the product that you make. Okay, process document categories. Um, it's correct. To, Back to, to the 
class diagrams and so on. If, if you're, if you're uh, documenting, for example, information flow in a system, that's the process that's within the system, but it's still a documentation of the product. You see? You see the uh, difference here between the process of creating the product, not the process that's within the product. You see? Yes, back to this. Process document categories. Um, Plans, estimates, and schedules. Reports that you pr produce during the process of, uh, of making the product. Uh, and standards implementation documentation. Working papers, interim documents that you deliver during uh, the development, etc., etc. Emails, messages, wikis, um, yeah, meeting notes, etc. And you can also divide in internal process documents and uh, external process documents. A structured and well-organized process may drastically reduce the amount of process documentation produced in a product. And this, this is the, one of the problems with the traditional approach to, to software development, the waterfall model. You're producing a lot of documents. You're producing a lot of process documents. And Agile, for example, is uh, a way to, um, to, uh, to, to set up your uh, processes in a way that you shouldn't, uh, you, you don't have to uh, produce all these documents to, to document the process. The process is uh, documentation in itself. External process documents. Um, these are documents that you produce to uh, um, formally have an agreement with your clients. For example, the contract, for example, the specification and the requirements, etc. Et uh, and the amount of project uh, documentation that you do depends on contractual agreements. Uh, let's say you have a pro project that um, is quite large and it's uh, maybe a 10 million dollar project. Then you have a lot of uncovered risks. Maybe you can uncover some of the risks in, in a pre-projects uh, pre of some kind. Uh, but then you have, um, have a lot of risks if you don't have this contract, a, a good contract and a good requirements document ready, then you have a lot of risks regarding um, the, the work that you're doing with your client. And you want to reduce these risks. And documentation, if you are have agreed upon something with your client and you have documented that, then you can go back to this documentation and say, yeah, it says here, this was what we agreed upon in this large program. And then the client can't uh, discuss on that. And it's also for regula regulatory requirements, former regulations related to the project. Uh, web projects, for example, you have regulations for informing the users on, on using cookies. Uh, you have regulations and uh, laws related to, um, uh, to uh, accessibility for, for the users, and so on and so on. Uh, and, you have to, um, uh, and you have to define these regulatory requirements in your document. Product documentation, system documentation, and user documentation, typically. Let's take system documentation first of all. This includes all of the documents describing the system itself. Uh, it could be a requirements document and a rationale, architectural model, component model, source code annotations and metadata, 
uh, and maybe a system maintenance guide. Uh, you, uh, and, yeah, and these things. Many other documents as well. User documentation. Um, it depends on what kind of users you have, how much user documentation you have to do. Uh, managers typically need a functional system description or a system admin, need an installation document that uh, <coughs> provides information on how to install, install it on the server, for example. Uh, novice users lead, need an introductory manual and an experienced user maybe needs some reference manual. Modeling is also a part of the product documentation. Uh, for example, the system architecture modeling, like system process models, se sequence diagrams, etc. Component modeling, class diagrams, state diagrams. You're familiar with the, these kind of modeling notations, I suppose. Uh, data layer modeling, ER diagrams or EER diagrams. Uh, and you, uh, supposedly you're familiar with code <coughs> annotation as well. Uh, that's providing code metadata with annotations in code documents. This is an example of Java, <coughs> Java doc, uh, I think, where you describe the parameters for a function and what it returns. <coughs> yeah. Okay, so these are the manual documents that we produce. <coughs> Remember that you have to consider whether or not to document the different things based on what kind of project it is. <coughs> there are also automated techniques. <coughs> For example, reverse engineering. Uh, by using schemas, uh, <coughs> whenever you cre create a database in MySQL, for example, uh, the, uh, the SQL or SQL in itself is a schema. That means that other interpreters of this schema can reverse engineer the SQL code and uh, produce uh, a class diagram or a database model diagram based on this. That's good. <coughs> Sorry. You have other schemas as well. Have you heard about WSDL? WSDL? For documenting uh, uh, web service APIs and REST APIs. That also provides information to reverse engineer or forward engineer REST API generation. Uh, you also have documentation generation with code annotations and metadata, and then you have typically tools like uh, Javadoc and PHP doc and such, to, to where you can produce the documentation of uh, uh, of your system based on these annotations. Okay, practical examples. In Visual Studio and Eclipse UML generator, you have the possibility to reverse engineer code annotations to UML component diagrams, for example. With my SQL workbench, you can reverse engineer DB schema to ER diagrams. So these are automated techniques for reverse engineering. And then you have documentation generation. 
Java doc for Java, PHP documenter for PHP, Yard for Ruby, PyDoc for Python. Have you seen these kind of docs that have been generated into HTML pages where you can uh, yeah, navigate through them? These are typically based on the annotations that you're doing in your code. <laughs> and for small projects, these automated techniques is more than enough for documenting your your system. Maybe you just start building your database without uh, uh, planning it uh, any, uh, in any way. Because you have a model in your head, you either write the SQL that you need or you're setting it up in some kind of database uh, <coughs> generation tool. And you put it onto, in, onto your dev server or staging server or something like that. Whenever you need to provide documentation for that database, you reverse engineer the DB schema that you have on your server. Then you have the last model at any time. Okay, documentation in Agile. <clears throat> First of all, what does the Agile manifesto say? We want working software over comprehensive documentation. So it's a more focus on producing software, producing um, actual uh, products rather than documenting them. How much and when? Three key terms uh, or, uh, yeah. Essential, valuable, and timely documentation. First of all, essential. Keep the documentation concise. <laughs> valuable. Documentation must be justified by value. Are there any stakeholders that find value in this documentation? Okay, no one knows to, needs to know how our database is, is modeled. Okay, then we don't produce a UML diagram of the database. You see? It has to be justified by some value for some of the stakeholders. <coughs> Timely, documentation just in time. And typically you use automated techniques for that, so that you more or less can push a button whenever you need that documentation. Just in time, prefer executable specification. <coughs> okay, that can be executable tests that actually verifies that this is working and this is working and this is working. Then you have documentation on that, that your modules are working for. <coughs> or it could be BDD tests. <coughs> uh, TDD or BDD tests uh, provide the basis of the documentation. BDD tests, behavior-driven development, they typically validate a specific functional requirement. And what is a functional requirement? Are the user stories that you wrote in uh, your specification, are those functional or non-functional requirements? Functional. Yeah. And what are non-functional requirements? And then just a recap of what we talked about earlier. It's more like... Um it should be a Java version requirement, for example, framework requirements. It could be response time requirements. Yeah. Those things that doesn't directly uh, give the user uh, anything you have to do in the system. Yeah. Exactly. So with BDD tests, we actually can validate that uh, when I push this button, uh, a form is sent to the server. You see? And then we have documented them with uh, just-in-time documentation that, uh, that uh, maybe the user interface works as it should be, as it's <coughs> defined in your user stories. <coughs> so tests specify the requirements of the design and provide a reported validation of your work. So that's also uh, a documentation. 
In BDD, you're using uh, what's called Gherkin VSL. Uh, you can define business requirements in natural language. And the BDD in the, or the uh, Gherkin interpreters interprets these sentences that you write, like in user stories, and uh, runs accordingly. You have BDD frameworks like Cucumber for Ruby or B Hat and Mink for PHP. This is an example of a, a BDD. No, sorry, yeah, uh, a BDD Gherkin. Uh, specification where you specify a test in natural language. Uh, you, you have a feature, this is a search. In order to see a word definition as a web site user, I need to be able to search for a word. And then you define a scenario, searching for a page that does exist. And then you have your actual tests. Given I am on some kind of URL, wiki slash main page, when I fill in search in, uh, with the uh, behavior-driven development and I press search button, then I should see agile software development. <laughs> so these are typically Gherkin statements. You see? Uh, natural language. You can't write anything you want in this. Uh, it's, it has to conform to this uh, to this um, uh, this schema. Uh, given I am on, uh, and then you have some cues. You see, uh, I am on. That means that you, the the generator in the, or the 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 BDD test framework in behind should load that specific page, and then it should find when I fill in search. Uh, maybe uh, an input field with the ID search uh, and then it fills it with behavior driven development and I press search button, that's typically a button with an ID search button then the frameworks, uh, the framework is, um, uh, is doing that for you then I should see agile software development, that's a text on the page that it loads uh, and uh, this means that actually uh, non-technical persons can write tests, can write tests based on user stories, or you can uh, have user stories in in the Gherkin DSL language. <coughs> We want documentation just in time, as I said. And you can use automated techniques or techniques like you find in TDD and BDD for that. <laughs> you also want to document late. Defer the creation of documents as late as possible. System overviews, etc., are best written towards the end of the development cycle of a release. Let's go back to the database documentation that you do in the start of a project. Typically in traditional sense, you would have modeled that database before you started using it with your software. And then you refactor your database because this didn't work and this didn't work and this class don't relate correctly to that class and so on and so on. Uh, or this entity um, doesn't have that relationship to that entity. I need a, another class, no, another table or entity between these two entities and so on and so on. So you have this mess of, uh, uh, um, of documentation but because you can't document it every time you do a tiny little refactoring of your database. So then you uh, should, in the agile process, you should document late. Because whenever you have something working, uh, in, in the end of a sprint, for example, um, and someone asks for that documentation, they should get what is actually the product that you have at the moment. 
And then you typically do this with automated te techniques like using MySQL Workbench for MySQL databases, reverse engineer your database that you have on your staging server or on your production server, and then you provide that documentation to, to those asking for it. So document late. Yes, documentation through the software development lifetime cycle. Traditional sense, you document a lot of things here and use a lot of effort into that documentation, you see? In Agile, you want to document late, deliver the documentations late on in the process. Yeah. Is that towards the end of the sprint or the entire development? It depends on whenever it's required. It could be in the middle of a sprint if a stakeholder, maybe a product owner, asks for If you have small sprints, you typically you do it in the, in the end of a sprint or you set it for the start of the next sprint. Okay, simplification, you want to simplify, <coughs> be clear and con concise. You want to modular, modularize small documents, interlinking. Make the information accessible and when possible, publicly available. What to document? Work closely with your audience. Customers, users, etc. could provide valuable information on what is demanded in documentation. So you, you have to elicit this uh, requirements for documentation from your clients, from your users, etc. Et when to document? Iterative documentation throughout the development life cycle. Try to document little pieces as you go along. Get feedback from fellow team members on your documentation. Um, yeah. Do you have code reviews in, in your uh, development? Some of the groups have, yeah. There you can, in code reviews, you can have other team members look at your annotations as well, if you're using some kind of Java, Java documentation or something like uh, And documentation is uh, a requirement. Treat documentation as a requirement that should be in the prioritized work stack. So whenever your product owner, for example, asks you to do documents uh, the entire database and uh, provide a UML diagram of your class, uh, a class, UML class diagram. Then you say to the, pro uh, to the pro uh, product owner that, okay, this will uh, need two hours for this, so we have to prioritize. Okay, the product owner says, then we'll uh, move this issue into the next thing, and then we document what you need to do. So, this is a part of the screen. It is a task. So, documentation is a work item and should be planned and assessed as any other work item. If it doesn't provide necessary value according to the workload, it should be down prioritized. Document audience in Agile. You can look at type of documents that you uh, may produce in Agile. Contract <coughs> models, design decisions, and here you see the audience. The link is provided in the slides uh, on, con uh, on conference. Yes, that's it. Any questions to documentation? No? 
Okay. We are finished for today, but uh, remember what we talked about, uh, because uh, some of the groups didn't get to do much work in the last minute. It's so important that you do a great job in, in the next sprint now, uh, and I will, uh, I will follow your JIRA um, the uh, Jira uh, rooms as we go along in this case. But uh, this is the last minute. This is it's the last <laughs> possible last uh, four weeks. Right? Yeah, so last four we weeks. Have to yeah. 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 So um, yeah, you you really need to buckle down and, and uh, give give it all in this sprint. Yes, I'll meet you in a seminar in about four weeks. Then it's no theory lectures, only the retrospective and some feedback on, on the course. Uh, what are we supposed to do from next lecture until the exam? Your reports. You can work on the reports individually. Both an individual and one group. So typically, the group report is done after the next seminar. Thank you.